Daily Words of God There were originally no families among humanity. Only a man and a woman existed, two different kinds of humans. There were no countries, to say nothing of families. But as a result of humanity's corruption, all kinds of people organized themselves into individual clans, later developing into countries and ethnicities. These countries and ethnicities consisted of small individual families, and in this manner all sorts of people were distributed among various races based on differences in language and boundaries. Actually, no matter how many races there might be in the world, humanity has only one ancestor. In the beginning, there were only two kinds of humans, and these two kinds were men and women. However, due to the progress of God's work, the movement of history, and geographical changes, to varying degrees these two kinds of humans developed into even more sorts of humans. At base, regardless of how many races might make up humanity, all of humanity is still God's creation. No matter what races people belong to, they are all His creatures. They are all the descendants of Adam and Eve. Even though they were not made by the hands of God, they are descendants of Adam and Eve, whom God created personally. No matter which type of being people belong to, they are all His creatures. Since they belong to humanity, which was created by God, their destination is that which humanity should have, and they have been divided according to the rules that organize humans. That is to say, all evildoers and all the righteous are, after all, creatures. Creatures that commit evil will ultimately be destroyed, and creatures who perform righteous deeds will survive. This is the most suitable arrangement for these two kinds of creatures. Evildoers cannot, because of their disobedience, deny that though they are God's creations, they have been seized by Satan and can therefore not be saved. Creatures that conduct themselves righteously cannot, based on the fact that they will survive, deny that they have been created by God and yet have received salvation after having been corrupted by Satan. Evildoers are creatures who are disobedient toward God. They are creatures that cannot be saved and have already been thoroughly captured by Satan. People who commit evil are also people. They are humans who have been corrupted to the extreme and who cannot be saved. Just as they are also creatures, people of righteous conduct have also been corrupted but they are humans who are willing to break free of their corrupt dispositions and have become capable of submitting to God. People of righteous conduct do not brim with righteousness. Rather, they have received salvation and broken free of their corrupt dispositions. They can submit to God. They will stand fast in the end though that is not to say that they have never been corrupted by Satan. After God's work ends, among all His creatures, there will be those who will be destroyed and those who will survive. This is an inevitable trend of His management work. No one can deny it. Evildoers will not be allowed to survive. Those who submit and follow God to the end are certain to survive. As this work is that of humanity's management, there will be those who remain and those who are eliminated. These are different outcomes for different types of people, 
and they are the most suitable arrangements for God's creatures. God's ultimate arrangement for humankind is to divide them by breaking families, crushing ethnicities, and shattering national borders in an arrangement without families or national borders. For humans are, after all, descended from one ancestor and are God's creation. In short, evil-doing creatures will all be destroyed, and creatures that obey God will survive. In this way, there will be no families, no countries, and especially no ethnicities in the time of rest to come. This kind of humanity will be the holiest kind of humanity. Adam and Eve were originally created so that humanity could care for all things on earth. Humans were originally the masters of all things. Jehovah's intention in creating humans was to allow them to exist upon the earth and to take care of all things upon it. For humanity had not originally been corrupted and was incapable of committing evil. However, after humans became corrupted, they were no longer the caretakers of all things. The purpose of God's salvation is to restore this function of humanity, to restore humankind's original reason and original obedience. Humanity in rest will be the very representation of the result that God hopes to attain with his work of salvation. Although it will no longer be a life such as the one in the Garden of Eden, their essence will be the same. Humanity will merely no longer be their earlier uncorrupted self, but rather a humanity that became corrupted and later received salvation. These people who have received salvation will ultimately enter into rest. Likewise, the outcomes of those who are to be punished will also be completely revealed in the end, and they will only be destroyed after God's work has ended. In other words, after His work is finished, those evildoers and those who have been saved will all be exposed for the work of exposing all types of people will be carried out upon everyone simultaneously. Evildoers will be eliminated, and those who are allowed to remain will be revealed simultaneously. Therefore, the outcomes of all types of people will be revealed at the same time. God will not allow a group of the people who have been brought salvation to enter into rest prior to setting aside the evildoers and judging or punishing them a little at a time. That would not be in line with the facts. When evildoers are destroyed and those who can survive enter into rest, God's work throughout the universe will be complete. There will be no order of priority among those who receive blessings and those who suffer misfortune. Those who receive blessings will live forever, while those who suffer misfortune will perish for all eternity. These two steps of work shall be completed simultaneously. It is precisely due to the existence of disobedient people that the righteousness of the ones who submit shall be revealed and it is precisely because there are those who have received blessings that the misfortune suffered by evildoers for their wicked behavior shall be revealed. If God did not expose evildoers, then the people who sincerely submit to God would never see the sun. If God did not take those who submit to Him to a suitable destination, then the ones who are disobedient to God would not be able to receive their deserved retributions. This is the process of God's work. 
if he did not carry out this work of punishing evil and rewarding good, then his creatures would never be able to enter into their respective destinations. Once humankind has entered into rest, the evildoers will have been destroyed and all of humanity will be on the right track. All the types of people will be with their own kind in accordance with the functions that they should carry out. Only this will be humanity's day of rest. It will be the inevitable trend for humanity's development. And only when humanity enters into rest will God's great and ultimate accomplishment reach completion. This will be the final part of His work. This work will end all of humanity's decadent life of the flesh, as well as the life of corrupt humanity. Humans shall thenceforth enter into a new realm. Though all humans will live in the flesh, there will be significant differences between the essence of this life and the life of corrupt humanity. The significance of this existence and that of the existence of corrupt humanity also differ. Although this will not be the life of a new kind of person, it can be said to be the life of a humanity that has received salvation, as well as a life in which humanity and reason have been regained. These are people who once were disobedient to God, who have been conquered by God and then saved by Him. These are people who dishonored God and later bore witness to Him. After they have undergone and survived His test, their existence will be the most meaningful existence. They are people who bore witness to God before Satan and are humans who are fit to live. Those who will be destroyed are the ones who cannot stand witness to God and are not fit to go on living. Their destruction shall be a result of their wicked behavior, and such annihilation is the best destination for them. In the future, when humanity enters the beautiful realm, there will be none of the relationships between husband and wife, between father and daughter, or between mother and son that people imagine they will find. At that time, each human will follow their own kind, and families will already have been shattered. Having completely failed, Satan will never disturb humanity again, and humans will no longer have corrupt satanic dispositions. Those disobedient people will already have been destroyed, and only the people who submit will remain. As such, very few families will survive intact. How can physical relationships continue to exist? Humanity's previous life of the flesh will be utterly banned. How can physical relationships then exist between people? Without corrupt satanic dispositions, human life will no longer be the old life of the past, but rather a new life. Parents will lose children, and children will lose parents. Husbands will lose wives, and wives will lose husbands. Physical relationships currently exist between people, but they will exist no longer once everyone has entered into rest. Only this sort of humanity will possess righteousness and holiness. Only this sort of humanity can worship God. 